Hello everyone. My name is Raghavendra Agarwal. Today we'll discuss on uh, the 5G network function SCP service communication proxy. Let's begin. Service communication proxy is actually a signaling hub, right? If you are able to recall the 4G network. In 4G network, we were having DRA, diameter routing agent, or we called diameter signaling routing DSR, right? So DRA, the function of the DRA was to as a diameter hub and route the signal in diameter signaling from one network component to other network component. For example, MME, P gateway, PSP, CSCF. For example, MME want to talk to HSS or P gateway want to talk to PCRF for GX, right? Uh, the CCR initial request and update request, right? So diameter based signaling. Similarly, PCF, CF want to talk to PCRF, right? So all that diameter routing was via the DRA because DRA was a kind of diameter routing agent, right? Similarly, in 5G network, we are having SCP. SCP is nothing but HTTP2 signaling hub, right? And responsible for routing the HTTP2 messages between the different network functions is similar to DRA. DRA was responsible for diameter routing agent. Similarly, SCP was responsible for HTTP2 signaling routing between the different network functions. Right. For example, we have network functions called AMF, SMF, SMSF, right? These network function, whenever they talk to uh, other network function, for example, PCF, UDM, right? For example, AMF want to talk to PCF for uh, user policy. Similarly, if AMF want to talk to UDM for context management, subscription, right? Or uh, uh, getting the subscription data, right? Or uh, uh, that type of signaling communication between the different network function between the in 5G, we are having network function as a consumer and the producer, right? So if consumer want to talk to producer, so that signaling routing will be via SCP. So it's nothing but HTTP2 signaling routing agent, right? Let's understand few benefits of SCP, right? So SCP provides the following network, uh, uh, following benefits to the network functions. First one is the improved load balancing. What does it mean? For example, we have consumer, let's say AMF, and want to talk to, let's say, uh, PCF, right? And in that particular uh, network, uh, let's say we have multiple PCF as a producer, which is producing the UE policies, right? Which is producing the UE policy service, right? And AMF want to consume that UE policy service, right? Now, the function of SCP is to balance the traffic between the different producers, right? There may be the possibility that more than one producers are available, which is exposing the same services to the consumer, right? Then SCP may balance the load between the both the producers, maybe based on load, based on their capacity, based on round robin, right? So this is the functionality of SCP to balance the load between the producers. Right. So it is so consumer no need to worry for the consumer that how to balance the load and maintain the uh, uh, round robin algorithm or maintain the balancing between the producers. It is the SCP responsibility now to maintain that load balancing between the different network producers. Right. Similarly, routing control. Routing control means, for example, if one of the producer is is not healthy, right? In that case, the SCP can send the traffic to another producer, right? To maintain that uh, uh, the session, right? So that session does not get rejected, right? If, for example, if one of the producer is 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 not healthy, or maybe it is uh, it is down, right? Or maybe sending some rejections, right? So SCP can reroute the traffic to the another producer, right? So that is again the capability of the SCP to reroute the traffic, right? If if we have multiple producers available and offering the same services to the consumer, but in 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 case for example if there is no alternate producers available, then in that case what SCP will do? SCP will reject the request and send the rejection cost code to the consumer. 
so again so scp will be responsible for rerouting of the traffic from one producer to another producer if one producer is not responding or not healthy or due to any reason is down right so because scp is maintaining the topology of the network right scp getting the topology from nrf and maintaining that information and basis that it is routing the traffic between the different producers right and may and reroute the traffic if one of the producer is not available outlier detection outlier detection means for example if one of the producer is is sending some some cause code some 5x errors right let's say 500 internal server error right so in that case producer is not healthy because producer is not able to process the request right so in there is a capability of the scp to reroute the traffic to another producer it keeps checking the status the rejection codes given uh, given by the producer and basis that it can reroute the traffic to another producer now another bit benefit of um, uh, um, scp is overload control overload control means it also keeps checking the health of its own pod for example if the network resources let's say cpu memory right all that network resources it keeps checking and if any point of time it observes that um, the network uh, scp pod is is overloaded right so there is a mechanism that it can it can detect that there is a overload overload happened and basis that it can start sending the rejections towards the consumer right it can refuse the new connections right it can respond to the ingress request saying that configurable error or http status as a cause code 503 forbidden because it detects there is a overload happen onto the scp there is another uh, uh, benefit of scp is inter vendor operability issue for example you have producer from x vendor and you have consumer for another vendor now because let's say producer has given some error code to the consumer but consumer is not able to process that error code so scp in between can do that interoperability issue and fix that interoperability issue and map that cause code with the cause code which is being understood by the consumer right so it has capability to manipulate the headers it can it has capability to manipulate the cause codes similar to dra Right, because in DRA you must be remember we keeps on doing that AVP mapping and uh, manipulation. Similarly, SCP can manipulate the HTTP headers and also the cost codes. So these are few benefits of having SCP in the network. That's it for this session. Thank you so much.